Hello, my name is Keith Davis. I'm president of KLJ Instruments. In the previous video, I presented an overview of the Squitter 2M ADSB signal generator. Today, I will demonstrate how to program a target with the synchronous interference mode of the Squitter 2M. Synchronous interference mode is used to verify that a receiver can correctly receive a target ADSB squitter in the presence of one, two, or up to five ADSB squitters that are very closely spaced or overlapping the target squitter causing garbling. Therefore, the relative timing of the target and the interfering squitters is programmed to the desired value by the operator. Channel zero generates the target squitter and channels one through five generate the interfering squitters. All RF channels are combined inside the squitter 2M and output on the type in RF output port on the front panel. First, I will open the squitter 2M software by double clicking the icon on the desktop to bring up the main menu. Then I will select synchronous interference from the main menu. The Synchronous Interference Test Setup menu is the first of three menus associated with Synchronous Interference Mode. I'll use the mouse to select the Target Setup button so that I can configure a target. I'm now presented with the Synchronous Target Setup menu. Within the top box of this menu are some basic target parameters. This slide highlights some of the basic target parameters that can be set. I will set the MODES address to 123456, leave the frequency at 1090, and set the RF level at minus 50 dBm, and I will set the flight ID to KLJINSTR. The second box contains some scenario setup values. Squitters can be transmitted at a fixed PRF I will select Jitter. The Jitter values are shown at the bottom of this slide. I can transmit this target information without any interference or select Sync to enable channels 1 through 5 to generate interference. For this simple demonstration, I will generate the target without interference. The duration of the scenario can be defined by the total number of target squitters to be generated or by length of time. I will set this scenario to run for 30 seconds. The third box on the menu holds the position and status information of the target. I will enter some convenient coordinates for this target. Finally, the bottom box of the menu provides for enabling and disabling the individual target squitter types. In the status information, I will set the vertical status to airborne, so I will enable the airborne position, airborne velocity, and identification squitters. Now that the target parameters have been chosen, I will exit from the menu back to the synchronous interference test setup menu. Before we can transmit the squitters, I must compile the information into command files that can be programmed into the hardware. I will do so by selecting the Compile Scenario button. This is a good time for some explanation concerning the various file types. The GUI Files box provides the capability to store all the information we have entered into a file. I will name this file s underscore one target dot csv. The csv file format can be opened with a simple word processing application such as Notepad or with a spreadsheet application such as Excel. The compiled scenario operation was produced up to six files with the scn or scenario file type. There's one file for each active channel. They have been saved under the default name 
S scenario. Jose them with the same S underscore one target name to match the name of the GUI CSV file. The handle to these six files is a file named S underscore one target dot text that is automatically created by the Squitter 2M. Software prompts me to enter a brief description of this scenario into this text file. We are now ready to run this scenario. Several message boxes are displayed to give information as to the run process before the scenario actually begins. Once the scenario is in progress, the front panel LEDs indicate each time a squitter is transmitted. Note that since I did not program any interference, only channel zero is active. I've connected the RF output of the squitter 2M to a commercial receiver. Note that it is receiving the squitters and displaying a single target. This concludes this demonstration of the target in the synchronous interference mode. In the next video, I will demonstrate how to add interference to the target.